We are still in South Philadelphia, and we're with some sisters here from the, the masjid here, and we want to talk to them a bit about their, their life as Muslim women in America. So I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves and talk a bit about how they become Muslim and talk about some of the challenges and issues facing Muslim women here in America. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi My name is uh, Fatima Abdul Haq. I have been Muslim for almost 20 years. I was introduced to Islam by a dear, dear friend of mine some almost 30 years ago. And after my quest for um, spiritual guidance, spiritual uplifting, I researched various religions. Having been raised a Baptist here in America, I researched various religions, and that's Christianity, Catholicism, Judaism, New Age, uh, Islam, born again Christian, and back to Islam. And I accepted Islam simply because it was um, a religion that I felt comfortable with, and it's a religion that I felt identified. The, many of the issues that I was dealing with at the time that well, let, let me ask you a question sister, because one of the misconceptions about Muslim women is that they become Muslim for a man or for their husband so as you have said you have made a researched and informed decision about accepting Islam for yourself absolutely and it, it is true that some women uh, do embrace Islam be, through um, a male companion a male husband uh, but I, um, as I did my research, and not only did I research, I studied uh, some of the, the religions that I spoke of, um, but as I said, it was Islam that I felt more akin to Islam, in which I, I felt addressed many of the issues that, um, questions that I, I wanted answered. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in addition to uh, Islam or embracing Islam because it addressed many issues, it was the sisterhood that really solidified uh, Islam for me, inshallah. And what are some of the issues you see facing Muslim women here in America? Well, I guess um, I I'm sure that we don't um, suffer many of the hardships that other sisters um, um, are faced with throughout the world. We haven't been born here in America. We have been afforded many, uh, many freedoms here. Uh, freedom to, to work, freedom to own uh, our own business very comfortably. Uh, and many sisters here in America own their own businesses. Um, I personally have not experienced any hardships. As a matter of fact, I think one of the things that um, women, uh, Muslim women here um, face is the misconception of what a, a Muslim woman is mm -hmm. and as a result of that we created a, a radio show. But well, let me ask you what is the most common misconception you encounter that people who are not Muslim think uh, define Muslim women? Oh that uh, she walks uh, five paces behind her husband and that um, she is completely and totally submissive to to her husband. Uh, we respect our, our men here in America. We respect our Muslim brothers, and we we work together. Um, and that's one of the misconceptions that um, the sisters, of other women who are non-Muslims, um, feel about Muslim women is that that they don't have their own identity. We do, in fact have our own identity. We own, as I said, we own our own businesses. Um, we work outside of the home, um, but we do respect the, um, the male's role in, uh, in, in Islam. Okay, Sister Shukra, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So just to uh, introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a brief bit about how you became Muslim. My name is Rashida Abdul Khabir. I took my shahada 27 years ago. Um, it was at uh, the end of a long spiritual journey as well. Um, but I was fortunate uh, in that uh, in my studies, both uh, in the secular studies and in my religious studies, I had a friend who gave me the Qur'an. I didn't know what it was at the time. I, it was given to me as a paperback. I thought, uh, I thought it was a wonderful religious poetry. 
And I mentioned it to a, a friend of mine that I thought this is the best poetry I've ever read. It, and it was only Al Fatiha. And um, I remember him saying so very clearly, oh, you don't have the real book. And he gave me a copy of the Quran in Arabic and in English with the commentaries. And I read it from cover to cover and took my Shahada. So much for me, every question that I was looking for that uh, as far as what our duties here are, what, what our purpose in life is, all of those things were answered. And I had no problem taking my Shahada. When I took my Shahada here in Philadelphia, there were very few Muslim women that you actually saw on the street. Um, they were, um, and I work in Center City, and I would come out at lunchtime and, and virtually see no other Muslim woman um, on the street. Now, here we are in 2006, and I can hardly walk up a block without meeting um, another Muslim woman and giving the salam. So I've been able to witness the growth of Islam, um, particularly among women, because we're so visible here. And uh, well, let me ask you a follow-up question. Then. How do you explain the, the, uh, the rapid growth of Islam and the number of, of women who are accepting Islam? In spite of this climate today, where there's a lot of disinformation about Islam. How do you explain that? I think um, particularly for the African-American woman, um, Islam offers the, the, the comfort and the spirit that we, we felt um, as we've been uh, given our history. You know, African Americans here were enslaved 400 years ago. The spiritual connections of our um, great-grandfathers, great-grandmothers, those things were passed on to us. And we've been seeking that same spiritual comfort. And I think Islam brings that to us. Um, when you meet a sister, you know immediately the connection. You feel that, that spirit, that comfort. I think also Islam gives us a framework in which we can operate. It clearly gives our life um, direction. We know how we're to behave. It, and, and in that is a comfort. There's a peace in that. And we're seeking that very much. Alhamdulillah. Okay, shukran. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, my name is Sister Fayaka Hassan, and our stories are so much similar, and I think that's why, uh, like uh, Sister Fatima mentioned, that the sisterhood is, is a one sisterhood. I, too, was in search of um, a religion. I um, accepted Islam when my children were very young, and um, what happened for me is I was given a Quran, and I read the Quran, and I wept because I found what I was looking for and it answered all the questions because it it is in fact a way of life so with it being a way of life it, it answered every question for me with regard to uh, what my role was as a human being towards humanity and what my role was as a woman and it, it helped me to identify myself and when you read the Quran you do find a true identity and because like uh, Sister Rashida explained we were people who were enslaved for such a long period of time and we were a people without identity mm -hmm. and Islam gives you an identity and it's a universal identity so that you identify with not just African Americans but you identify with uh, Arabians, you identify with the Egyptians, you identify with the world and, and that was the other thing. It, it, just opened up a, a new world for me. Islam really opened up a new world for me. And, and for, from your life before Islam, how did Islam change your life? Well, uh, one of the first things was um, covering, which by Allah's mercy came very easy for me. I put on my headpiece from the day that I took Shahada, and I have not removed it by Allah's mercy. Mm -hmm. And it was something that was very easy for me, and a lot of people think, oh, well, this is happening, and that is happening, you're hot, you're this, you're that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you can see, if you look at us, you can see that we are receiving a breeze. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always with us and gives us that comfort. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was never a hardship for me. So. Uh, and in your daily interactions, you know, I, this question must come up about Islam mm -hmm. and terrorism and Islam and extremism. Mm -hmm. And as in your form of da'wah, how do you go about explaining to the people that terrorism and all these things have nothing to do with the proper religion of Islam? Well, if, um, if I'm asked directly any type of question, I let them know that, um, like what happened, the 911 that happened was not in accord with the rule of Islam with regard to wars and things like that. But mostly what happens for us as women is because we're 
immediately identified as Muslims. So just in our character, and I embrace all people, I embrace all humanity. I'm not um, standoffish with regard to other women who are not of my religion. And I think that being um, an embracing person um, enables people to accept me. And once you can accept me as a Muslim, then, you know, it goes on from there. Okay, sure. 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 okay, sisters, I'd like to thank you all very much for spending some time with us and sharing with us some words and some of your insights about the life of Muslim women in America. And we hope that our viewers were able to get a glimpse of what it's like for Muslim women here in America. And we ask you all to continue with us on our journey of discovery of Islam and